just watching a uh, recommended view video that came up and um, it brought a few things to mind, a few things that are very obvious for me um, and it sort of made me think it's that what I saw is a wider reflection on the Western world today. I remember a particular guy who, um, not somebody um, who I might be expected to talk about, not him, but another guy who spent much of his life in Manhattan. And as some off-gridders tend to realise that, you know, that they just, it's not all off-gridders, but a few of them get a sense that there's more to life than this sort of suburban plastic bubble that they're living in. And when he was asked why he went off grid, he said, I just got sick of everything coming to me in a plastic packet and it's like life didn't exist outside stuff on supermarket shelves in plastic packaging. You know, he said even salads, you know, you'd sit there you go and buy a salad, it was in a, a plastic packet or a cardboard packet or something like that and it was just like everything was completely done, completely finished and in a plastic packet and he just had a sense that he was missing out on you know the real world and that life was supposed to be something more than just paying for stuff in money uh, with money and everything coming in a plastic packet from a shop, you know, and with others, you know, it, it's different. With me, it was more a financial thing um, because, you know, I got a larger version to debt after seeing my uncle bankrupt for around about two and a half million dollars worth of property um, and due to the fact that the power system here was privatised to pay off state debt, um, you know, it was going to cost me about 50 grand to get the power on and I just realised this is not realistic. We've got to do something to make it happen without running into massive debt and, you know, I could get a, a decent solar system that would have done probably everything I could dream of for about $25,000, you know, and I still didn't get one that big. but. Also, I didn't have the money for that. I lived within my means and I knew that the cost of the power connection was more than a huge off-grid system was going to be anyway. And then you're going to be stuck to paying the bill every week. But anyway, I'm getting off track here a bit. What I really want to say is it seems that the vast majority of People in first world countries in suburbia have truly bloody lost touch uh, with the real natural world, as it were. Um, now, I don't mean to say that there aren't a whole bunch of yuppies going to buying uh, seedlings from hardware stores and, and planting them um, in order to grow a few vegetables. I know many do. But some of them are just so clueless as to stuff that's right under their nose. Because last time I checked, you know, my body was a part of nature. <clears throat> and some of the crap that people rub on their skin, spray in the air that they're breathing, you know, eat, like some of the stuff they eat is fucking unbelievable. And yet, sort of, there's no real connection between anything nature related and their own body half the time. I'll tell you exactly what I was watching. And the trouble is, I've seen this sort of stuff numerous times before. Out in the wider world, not just on YouTube, I mean I've seen it a few times on YouTube, but out in the wider world, 
as well. And, <laughs> you know, it's a big fat black chick. Oh, hopefully I'm pregnant. Oh, what a shame. I'm not pregnant this time. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, oh, I'll try and, and you look, and there's several other videos where she's done a pregnancy test. Oh, and if you watch my channel, you know, every month I check to see if I'm, I've conceived yet and all this. Uh, and, and you just look at the size here and you go, fucking hell. Oh, hell. For the love of God, you know, living on all this high fructose corn syrup, fucking burgers that have got pink slime in them, that are, who knows what. You could feed them up fucking raccoon and they wouldn't know the difference. It could be like some of the sausages here. You know, they're, they're fucking, 80% of them, you know, it's, okay, it's rice flour, it's not too bad, but they use rice and triticale which is, it's not wheat, but it's another grain that's sort of a sweeter grain. Um, they used to grow up where I grew up. And they often mix this rice flour and the triticale together and, and that, you know, helps them make their friggin', you know, ham and garlic flavoured luncheon, ham and chicken flavoured luncheon, but that's it. Flavoured. It's got fuck all pork in it and no chicken, and you know, or very little chicken, and it's mainly just wheat and triticale, you know. And as for the actual sausages on the barbecue, like a lot of the ones you buy cold, you know, that'll be triticale and wheat. The ones you buy to put on a barbecue are often rice flour and triticale. And you can look at them, and the content of it, it's more than half not meat, it's, it's all this other, and you're sitting there frying up a bunch of rice and triticale, and then you eat the fucking thing, and it tastes like, oh God, it tastes worse than some of these flavoured bloody meats. I mean, it's, you know, it tastes five times as bad as spam. It just tastes like pure fucking chemical, you know, and it's not just the United States. Over here, we're a lot better. A lot of food standards are higher. A lot of the expectations of food are dramatically higher. You know, people just... We have so much food here that we export so much that the local expectations are very fussy. Very, very fussy. Um, and, you know, but all the same, we don't have high fructose corn syrup. We ain't drowning ourselves in everything corn based, but we are drowning ourselves in everything wheat based, you know. But some of the practices that happen in the States, you know, like eating donuts for breakfast, people look at you like you're fucked in the head. If you're eating jambon donuts, you know, Berliner buns, whatever you want to call them, you know, or anything with any glazing, if you're eating anything like that for breakfast, people look at you like you're nuts. I've heard of kids in Disney World eating just straight lollies for breakfast. And sure, they're on holidays, but there's no way a parent here would let the kids eat that sort of shit, you know. And and it doesn't stop there. Another one that I've seen is, is <clears throat> someone I heard of. Oh, you know, I had in trouble conceiving. The guy was drinking 12 cans of Coke a day. He was absolutely fucking addicted to the shit. And you know, minimum 12 cans of Coke. Um, and. Uh, you know, then it come out a bit more, you know, he's basically going through 12 cans of coke a day and if he didn't get that plus three bombs a day, then he'd have a fucking tantrum, you know, and you just think, dude, like, fucking no wonder. And it's no different with other people I come across. Fucking energy drinks. You know, I've had dependency issues on energy drinks myself, I'll admit it. But, that's fucking crazy, you know, a couple of months back, it was probably about a year back, to be honest. I was in buying some stuff at the supermarket and uh, come out, and they got these seats in this mall where the supermarket is, and there's this girl there, you know, typical bloody brainless white trash, sitting there with one of those big fucking double-sized cans of V, which is, is basically a common energy drink. Um, it's probably more common than Red Bull here. And 
she's sitting there with one of these great big bloody 500ml double hit cans, drinking the thing like this. She's probably, oh, I don't know, about 22 or something. Tiny little baby there with her. And I thought, you're fucking stupid. That baby is going to be screaming all night. What's it got written on the can? Not for pregnant or lactating women, but there's, if, you know, and then she'll be sitting there later on. What's wrong with the baby? Why won't it go to sleep? I don't know. I don't fucking know. That stuff has come through in your milk, and then the baby's breastfed, and then it goes off its fucking tit because it's bloody two months old. It's getting a load of fucking red ball through the milk, basically. Fucking crazy, you know. And, you know, back to the big fat shit. There's a lot of people that are celiac and they don't even know it, you know. But I can guarantee if you looked at her diet, there would be fucking takeout food every day. There would be fucking donuts. There would be shit that over here we wouldn't even feed our dogs. She'd be probably hoeing into this stuff. And then they get to the end of the month they look double the size of fucking Elvis travels and turn around and say oh it's a shame I'm not conceiving fuck you're so full of fucking sugar and fucking shit high fructose corn syrup god knows how many colorings and fucking random bullshit you know and you're probably oh sore back because of too much weight so you're on painkillers as well you got this whole cornucopia of fucking shit going through your system and then you wonder why you don't get pregnant. How pregnant do you think these sheep out here would get? <clears throat> if I went out there and fed them frickin' half of the same shit, first of all, the sheep wouldn't eat it because they'd be wary of it because it wouldn't seem quite right. Secondarily, their conception rate would drop like a stone if they were eating colourings and all this other crap known to man, you know. And this is the thing. Some things, you know, I must admit, we dealt with those pigs. And uh, those pigs are on more antibiotics than you poke a stick at. And it was, it was fucking ridiculous. There were times there where <clears throat> I'd go out and give a pig painkiller mixed with you know, something else, and it, you couldn't do it for any more than three days in a row to damage their limit kidneys, and they go, oh, this, you know, pig doesn't seem to be terribly fertile anymore. Well, look at the thing. You got a fucking sponge up on so many fucking antibiotics, is it any wonder? You know, and, hey, there was three antibiotics in the feed alone. You know, apparently they didn't affect the fertility, but some of these things... Honestly, you know, I used to call them the fucking the porcine pin cushion because I'd be stabbing a needle in their ass every fucking other day, you know. And then, oh, oh, oh well, he, he sort of hasn't fathered many fucking piglets, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, fucking no wonder, you know. This is the thing, you know. And yet they're also just oblivious to any effect or any association of what they do, what they eat, what they drink, and then it might have some sort of an effect on their ability to be pregnant. You know, and then they'll be running off to IVF. So there goes a whole ton of money trying to use more fucking chemicals to manipulate something to happen that isn't happening for a fucking obvious reason. I mean, it's like getting a hole in your fucking car tire because you drove over a piece of glass. But instead of going, radio, we're going to fucking patch this hole up or whatever, put a new tire on, then you're going to sit there working out how the fuck you can connect an air compressor hose to your tire that continues to pump the tire up while you're still driving as opposed to just fix the fucking tire. You know, it, it's just one problem is created and instead of fix problem number one, they sit there trying to work out some big fandangle way 
to resolve problem number one by a secondary method as opposed to trying to fix problem number one outright. You know, it, it's really fucking crazy. But this is the thing, you know, everything is, there's an answer to everything. Everything that you want is expected to come in a packet. You know, one thing that I remember when I was at school, I'd done a psychology class, and the teacher used to say that it's unbelievable. I mean, he'd been an actual practicing shrink. He'd been into nut homes in the United States, ones in Australia here. He spent a bit of time working in the States and then come back here. Um, and he said it was unbelievable. Sometimes you sit down with a client <coughs> and... Um, you know, they'd be sitting there, ha oh, oh, well, there's something wrong with my son, blah, blah, blah. So they'd do all the tests and analysis and talk to them for fucking hours and they'd work out, okay, this guy's a fucking psychopath, you know. And then they'd go out and they'd tell the mother, well, we've got some news, bad news, ha oh, oh, what is it, what is it going to be? Well, we've discovered your son's a psychopath. Oh, oh, that's a relief. Oh. And he used to say, it didn't matter what the fuck it was, it seemed as soon as it was given a name, as soon as it was identified and that it was identified by a name and that other people may have had it, it didn't matter if it was fucking terminal cancer. It didn't matter if they were narcissists, narcissistic personality disorder, which is untreatable and actually gets worse with therapy. Just so long as there was a fucking name for it, didn't matter if a psychopathic serial, serial killer, if there was a name for it, then it was, oh, what a relief, there's a name for it. Because then the assumption would be, well, if there's a name for it, either there's already a, a fix for it, or somebody is working on a fix, and the fix is only a year or two away, that we'll be able to buy it as a pill in a shop, in a plastic packet, just take this pill, and it all goes fine. You know. And uh, anyway... It seems that the you know it, in many ways it, it's I don't even think it's a sheeple thing. I think it, it's just the way the cultures become that so many people live in these plastic bubble, first world, money in your pocket, everything's bought at the shop, plastic bubble existence where everything has an answer and everything has a fix and all you got to do is just pay the money and it's all fine, that we've sort of lost the tin tax of how things actually play out and finding, you know, solid answers that have been there since the dawn of fucking humanity before we were even living in anything more than a fucking tent made out of well, well, not even a tent, just a hut made out of a bunch of fucking leaves and sticks held together with fucking reeds. You know. Anyway, that's my little uh, rant about uh, those lost in the uh, concrete jungle of the first world and um, some of my observations as an open-minded off-gridder.